welcome to Pod Junction, where business meets podcasting. Whether you're on a morning jog, driving to work, whipping up a meal, or just taking a moment for yourself, our weekly bite-sized episodes promise fresh insights from successful podcasters who have cracked the code of using podcasts to grow their business. So whether you're a podcasting newbie or seasoned podcaster, grab your notebooks and get ready. Wow, hello and welcome to another brand new episode of Pod Junction. My name is Matt Edmondson. Beside me is the debonair uh, Sadaf Bainon. Uh, how are we doing? <laughs> we're good. Yeah? yeah? I noticed actually just looking across the table, you've taken your bracelet off because when we were getting set up, I did notice it was jingle jangling a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly why. <laughs> 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 okay, well, fair play to you. So welcome to the show. It's great to have you here with us. We are a podcast which talks about podcasting, <laughs> which I, just, I still think is quite funny. Uh, but yes, it's a podcast about podcasting where we talk about how, um, well, how to use podcasting to grow your business, basically, uh, is what we do. So yeah, what have we got coming up today? So we've got um, Daniel Badai again. Again, Again, the legendary. Yes. <laughs> the legendary thing. And um, he is talking about how he uses a free audit that he offers to um, his podcast guests as a generation tool for his business. Ah, uh, lead gen. Mm-hmm. So we get into lead gen with Dan Badai, who is uh, a legend. We, uh, Dan Badai was in the last episode, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. To be fair, ladies and gentlemen, uh, whilst it may be a week between you listening to the episodes, depending on how you consume the content, it's been a few weeks since we recorded that one. Yes. So I'm just racking my, my memory. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was, Dan. Yes, I remember what we talked about. Yes, good. Uh, so we've got Dan again this week. Um, Dan's such a legend. Uh, I really like what Dan's done, and he's really used podcasting to grow his business quite a lot. So you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this, because he has definitely walked the walk, as they say. Mm. So, yeah, is there, you say there's a question you need to ask me before we yes, get into Yes, I have it. a question. And I will take this with me. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> um, okay, so what's the most unexpected feedback that you've ever received from a listener? And how did it, in, how did it impact you? So not a guest. From a listener. A listener. The most unexpected feedback. Um, that's a really good question. I'm glad I was prepped about this beforehand. (laughs) There's a few instances which stick out in my mind, right? There was, um, uh, had one the other day, a friend of yours, guy called Nick. Is it Nick? The art guy? Um, do you know who I mean? The, um, uh, I think it's Nick. Uh, Nick The GP. No? No. His name will come back to me. That's really bad, isn't it? Um, anyway. It's the posters to, guy, the yeah. Christian, yeah, yeah. He's a GP. He's a GP as well. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know that. So uh, anyway, Nick contacted me on Instagram and said, uh, "Really loved the show, the e-commerce podcast." And he went all the way back to episode one. Nice. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> that always surprises me. And it's not him. It's not just him. There's yeah. people that reach out to me on LinkedIn all the time, going. Yeah, I really love the show. I'm going to start again from episode one and consume them all. I'm like, that is, I mean, that's hundreds of hours of content. Mm. And it's e-commerce. It's not like, you know, four years ago. Some of it still makes sense. Yeah. But, you know, it's like four years ago in, in digital terms is, like is worse like 1960s, is Post-COVID. A, <laughs> yeah. lot of, a lot of changes, yeah. right? <laughs> There's been a lot of changes. But the one which surprised me, surprised me the most mm. was... Uh, at one point, I was stopped in the street and someone recognized me. Nice. Tell us they, about that. They'd been watching the video. They're like, you're that guy on YouTube, aren't you? <laughs> and I was like, and it turns out, yeah, they'd been watching the show. That's, so that, is that EP again? Uh, yes, I think, I can't remember. I think it was EP. It was one of the podcasts. It must have been EP because it was, it was pre-push. Um, and just recognize me mm. like, oh, you're the guy on the, I was like, what? The? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. But That's you know what? Spooky. That's actually, um, like often when you start a podcast, you can go for months before anyone yeah. picks you up. Right. So mm-hmm. it's nice that someone goes back and actually watches those early ones. Yeah. I, well, actually episode listen, one, you can't watch listen yeah, it's to a, it. on EP, on EP it's yeah. listen only. Mm. And I was listening to it the other day because we would, uh, we've created a new social media channel for EP. Mm-hmm. And so we were talking about you know, the importance of the first nine, but maybe we should do something like, you know, the first nine posts on Instagram for a podcast at some point. 
So anyway, we, we're, we're on about, you know, how do we create the first nine posts? And so th- one of the posts was, you know, um, I can't remember what some of the question, like how did it get started and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And I'm like, well, it'd be just really interesting to actually listen to mm-hmm. episode one. And I went back and went, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Were you cringing inside? I was like, oh, I just would not do it this way now. But, you know, um, it's just all a big learning curve, isn't it? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Have you had any surprising feedback? No. No. <laughs> that <was a> short answer. <laughs> okay. Well, on that bombshell, let's listen to Dan Badai. Uh, and let's get into uh, this clip. Then Salaf and I will be back to chat about how it works for us. Here we go. So you you came up with the idea then of doing this free audit as like um, a sort of an easy next step for clients to take. You obviously do some kind of audit on their retention marketing and come up with some strategy for them. Do most people then go on from the audit to being clients? Um, is is that because it sounds to me like the audit is is a is a fair bit of work. Um, but I imagine if you're still doing it, then it's worthwhile. Yeah, sure. So, you know, once they get to the audit, they can see the value. And I, th- I think it's really it's really valuable for them. Um, mm. And it's free, right? So <laughs> free audit. And I think like not half of them, but like one third of them, they become clients in the end. Mm. And some of them later, they come back a few months later. So I think uh, we can say half of them, they become clients within six months. That's yeah. It. That's really interesting. Uh, the third of people become clients. This is a similar st- st- statistic to a few other people that I've spoken to, actually, that mm-hmm. do a similar sort of thing and who have slightly different mechanisms, but these interesting sort of tripwires along the way um, that you sort of, you convert about a third. And when you think about, I just, I just want to rewind uh, and say to you, you're converting about a third. <laughs> I don't know of anything else which has such high conversion ratios to clients. If you think about what the, is podcasting right for my business? Well, you kind of think, well, here's Daniel saying to you, there's a mechanism that he has where he converts a third of his client in effect or potential clients, ideal guests. And you kind of go, that's a really interesting thing to do, isn't it? Really interesting thing. And I guess if you've if you've established quite a good relationship through the podcast, you then deliver value through your services. Um, do you find a lot of people stay customers because you it feels like you would have a better relationship with those customers, right? Mm-hmm. In the long run, so yeah, after. yeah. So you know. Um... Also, what I realized, these podcast guests, these tend to be the best clients, really mm-hmm. good clients. And maybe it's just because of the personality fit. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, because, you know, when when a client comes from, let's say, a cold email, but not from the podcast or, or um, from a platform, we are on a few platforms like Clutch. We are still on Upwork. Sometimes we have clients from there. Mm-hmm. And there we know them less their personality and you know those are harder to uh, handle sometimes Mm -hmm. while with referrals and podcasts it's it's much better Um, they stay longer they spend more our average client stays with us 12 months so Mm -hmm. one year but these podcast uh, guests they tend to again they tend to stay longer and spend more and (laughs) And they are well, not bigger businesses necessarily, so yeah. it's different. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're intrigued and want to dive deeper into this conversation, check out Pod Junction Cohort, where you can listen to the complete interview and much more. Simply visit thepodjunction.com for more information about how to join. Welcome back. That was a subtle cut. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, now welcome to Podjunction Cohort. <laughs> Good reason to go to Cohort and finish off that his thought. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Absolutely love that. So yeah, very good. So cut. Well done to the editing team there. We nailed that one. Um, <laughs> as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, or here, if you're listening to the audio version, when we do podcasts, we just tend to leave it in, warts and all. 
uh, just a bit more authentic, including that it's like that, because, you know, why not? It's just a bit more fun. It just means I can just make fun of something, <laughs> create a laugh, which is, you know, super important. <laughs> So, yeah, welcome back. Now, uh, yeah, if you want to chat, I mean, it's worth saying, if you want to check out that full interview with Daniel, which is just an astounding interview and, and get into a bit more detail, do go check out Podjunction Cohort, where you can listen to the whole interview uh, in its, well, in its, I was going to say the whole interview in its entirety, which is kind of an obvious statement, but... <laughs> you can listen to the whole thing uh, in Cohort. <laughs> Daniel's a legend. Now, just to sort of reaffirm uh, the strategy... Uh, to give you the basics of what Daniel's doing here so you know, uh, if it's just in case it's not clear. Daniel uses his podcast to invite people onto his show who would be an ideal client, right? That's what he does. Mm -hmm. And so he brings them onto the show. He talks to them. They obviously deliver some kind of value for the podcast guest. Uh, and then Dan offers them like a free audit because he's like, hey, we're a retention marketing company. We do this, this, and this. If you would like us to, we'll, you know, we can do, we have this free audit uh, that we'll do for your business on your retention marketing. Uh, and it's definitely not a heavy sell. Uh, and he's, you know, he's got his email follow-up sequences on the back of that. Um, and out of the customers that say yes, so, so out of the podcast guests that say yes, he ends up doing this free retention marketing audit, which is actually a high value thing. So mm -hmm. it's not like you just, I mean, the problem with audits, I find, uh, I don't know if you find the same, someone offers me an audit, I'm like, you're just going to sit there and pick fault with everything that we've done and tell me how you do it better, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they kind of, they've lost their appeal a little bit to me just because I'm just like, I just don't want to hear I'm doing wrong from you and tell mm -hmm. you me how you're doing better. But I don't think Dan does that. That's not my experience mm -hmm. with him. Um, but he does do this audit he delivers high value to the clients. Then one third of the people to a half of those people that do the audit within six months become his client. So he's using the podcast as a lead generation tool. Mm -hmm. um, he's using it to talk to high value clients. So people that he, you know, will end up buying his services. Mm -hmm. So he's very targeted in who he has as a guest. Yeah. Um, his strategy then is to offer them a, a, a sort of a, a next step after the podcast mm -hmm. um, and that leads to a very definite sort of growth in his customer base. So that's how he's using podcast to grow his business. And he's mm -hmm. talking there specifically about this free audit. So, yeah, just to yeah. put it in context. I thought that would be helpful. That is very helpful. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. Well, my pleasure. <laughs> um, yeah. So what did you take away? What did you think? Anything stick out? I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because... The free audit as an idea. So the, the concept of this free audit is, like I say, you've, you've got this person on your show. You're, so you're using the show to interview people who would make great guests, uh, great clients. And what Dan has done, which I think is brilliant, um, and it does work very well, is he's then offered a very clear next step, mm -hmm. right? So that's the great thing about that audit. Now, I'm not saying an audit is something that, you know, every podcaster should do if you're using it to sort of, you know, talk to your ideal guests if you're using podcasts for that strategy. But offering clients a very clear next step mm. in their journey with you, that makes a lot of sense. Whether it's an audit, whether it's a free ebook, whether it's a free service, whether it's a reduced price service, mm. I think you have to test it a, a little bit. Um, but I think it has to be a no brainer, as in, if you offer something, it has to be something that makes sense for the guest yeah. uh, and is very hard to say no to. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I think the the strategy of offering something to guests like that is is really good. Yeah, um, I agree. I think um, it, it it's a chance to showcase your expertise. Mm -hmm. You're putting the money where your mouth, mouth where your money is, money where your mouth is. I just pick either one. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, um, also it's an incentive, as you said, for, for, um, the client to engage with you. Yeah. It's an, I think you need to give them another easy yes. Mm. So inviting someone onto your show who you don't know as a way to initially connect with them is an easy yes, mm -hmm. I think. For, yeah. Certainly if you're talking to... CEOs, business leaders, which Daniel is because his whole company is about retention marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so especially for e-com businesses, using email to retain customers, that's what his yeah. whole company is all about. So 
he's going to go and get on e-commerce business owners. That's what he's going to do. And then he's going to talk to them about how they do retention marketing and start to form that relationship. And he's giving them an easy yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I think it's it's good to have sort of two or three easy yeses mm -hmm. for your lead, uh, your potential clients to say yes to. I'm just re-listening to what I've just said in my head. It does make sense. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of yeses in that yeah. sentence. Um, so giving clients an easy yes and having a very deliberate journey I think is really important for podcast guests, mm -hmm. right? So if you're selling, it doesn't matter what you sell, like Dan's Retention Marketing, let's say you do, uh, I don't know, like an online course, mm -hmm. right? So you could use your podcast. You go and get people who would... Uh, as a guest on the show, you interview them, people who are like your course members, yeah, right? So it's very targeted. Mm -hmm. These would be the kind of people that would buy your course and you kind of go, well, listen, come on to the show. You have a conversation with them. Maybe there's something you can give them in between the course. It's like uh, I can give you a free audit or a one-on-one -on -one coaching session mm -hmm. or I can um, chat to you about this or we've got this thing over here which we can give you which will onboard. Uh, whatever that is, I think it's a great thing to do. Now, in terms of when you offer this, then, um, Dan does it in the same conversation. So you'll have the interview. He'll end the interview like 10 minutes before the hard deadline. Yeah. Um, so if you've scheduled an hour with the client to record or the guest to record, he'll end it, you know, 10 minutes to. Mm -hmm. And then he'll just spend two, three minutes, not a heavy sell at all. Just telling you about the audit um, and whether or not you want to, mm -hmm. you know, you want to take them up on that. So, yeah, I think I think having an easy yes, just taking two or three minutes in a non-pressure environment. You've already as long. <clears throat> what I find is when we do this, because we do do it with push, you know, that's what yeah. one of our strategies um, is with push. You know, there are. Like with Pod Junction guests, there are things that we could talk to them about. There's all kinds of things mm -hmm. that we can bring in to sort of take them on that journey with us to give them the sort of the next easy yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just important to do. So, yeah, definitely do it. Mm -hmm. Pick your time, you know, whether the end of the podcast is the right time, whether you need more uh, interaction before the next steps. And you've just got to test it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um in summary, it's a very effective tool for lead gen then. <laughs> it's super effective. I think yeah. podcasting is a very effective tool mm. for networking mm -hmm. uh, and for making new connections. I think the next step will give those people, it will move them from just being connections to yeah. leads, yeah. right? So it is. I think mm. that it is a good mm next step lead generation what i find also is actually people come back to you what they might say to you or oh, no it's okay i don't i don't need the audit now mm -hmm. uh but six months later if you stayed in touch with them and maintain that relationship they may come mm -hmm. back to you and say you remember that free audit that you said yeah. is it could we do that now mm -hmm. um and so that can also happen i think so it it, it is a bit of a long game it, i mean the downside to it i suppose is it's one-to-one -one. In other words, your his approach is you go get a client or a potential client mm -hmm. on your podcast. You record the podcast, which is not, I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward, but let's, there's, there's effort involved, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm offering them a free audit. So I'm doing a lot of work up front to try and get the client, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and it's very much all about Dan. So Dan has to do it. Dan has to interview the guest. Mm -hmm. Dan has to offer the free audit. Um, he doesn't actually do the audit all the time i wouldn't have thought but mm. maybe he does i don't mm. i you know but it's one of those things where it's very resource intensive for you that's the downside to it yeah um and so like with push the push to be more podcast is very much this format we go and find people who we think mm. would be ideal guests mm -hmm. we interview that well i interview them we chat to them and then we have a you know a conversation at the end about um and we we are experimenting with things like do we do the audit do we do a free workshop do we mm -hmm. do like a free online course that's you know we're ordinarily charging money for over here and they could access mm -hmm. it you know and does that then lead on to bigger things you've got to test yeah. these different things yeah. right <clears throat> and so we can do that with push but it is very demanding on my time 
Yeah. Right. So I could maybe record, I mean, I could, I suppose, record seven or eight episodes a week if I really, mm -hmm. well, I could just set a whole day aside and mm -hmm. just talk to people. Um, so you've got to decide if it's worthwhile for you, I think, to do that. Um, I don't know if I'd do this on an e-commerce business mm -hmm. if I was selling the client like 30 bucks worth of product, you yeah. know, at the end of it. Maybe if their lifetime mm -hmm. value is high enough, it's worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd, I'd probably have other things involved in yeah. that. Yeah. But I think if you've got high value clients mm. that require good relationship at the start yeah. and you don't mind getting your, you know, you don't mind getting your feet dirty or whatever, the, yeah. your hands dirty. Yeah. Um, or your feet. Either one's fine. <laughs> pick just, one. You know, yeah, just pick one. It's totally fine. But I think it's a really interesting yeah. strategy. And I think it, it, you know, it definitely works for us. I've just mm. seen it work for other people. I know it works super well mm. for Dan. What was interesting was, mm. I don't know if you picked up on this, was he said that podcasting guests make the best clients in that no i didn't pick up on it yeah what he the way it worked was the relationship with podcasting guests because it starts in a very different footing right mm. so let's say i i i go and invite you onto my show right i'm trying to flog you my podcasting services you come onto the show we have a great conversation it's a great way to start a relationship, right? Mm. You remember it. I remember it. It's just good fun. Um, we put the podcast out. You share it with your friends. It's something that you're proud of, mm -hmm. right? And, and all that sort of, sort of stuff. Versus if you, and then I say to you, listen, we do the retention marketing thing. Would you like a free audit? And you go, I have not stance. Yeah, we, we, that'd be great, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so you take that and then you end up, you know, becoming a client. And what Dan said is you, uh, if you go that route, you stay longer and you spend more, mm -hmm. right? Whereas if you just approach our agency and say, listen, uh, I need some help with retention marketing, and we go, sure, here's what we do. Mm. Um, even if I offer that same free audit, that client is less likely to stay as long or spend as much. Mm -hmm. And the reason is not because what the value of the service, the service is the same. It, the reason is because what, how it started, that relationship started. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> and so yeah. that's incredibly powerful so mm. that the relationship starts on a much better footing. We've yeah. talked about this before, you know, yeah. meaningful conversations on a podcast mm. and how guests come onto a show and instantly open up. Mm. I mean, instantly. It's not even, you don't even have to warm up. You know, on push, we, we start with a question, <laughs> which I... We start, we ask guests on the, I ask guests on the, on the podcast, I've read their bio out, I've introduced them to the show and I read it out and I say, listen, if you could have your own podcast and you could have anybody on the show as mm -hmm. your guest to interview, past or present, that's had a really big impact on your life, who would it be and why, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a, that's a deep question to get straight into. Yeah. If I make, if you called me up and said, listen, you know, uh, I'm interested in your podcasting service and I said, great, Sadaf, listen, let me ask mm -hmm. you a question before we get started. Mm -hmm. You're going to go, who is this lunatic? <laughs> on the phone what is he yeah. talking about <clears throat> whereas on a podcast because we're recording it it just makes different. total sense mm. right it's mm. a different environment and you're like yeah let's do it so um i remember i think i've mentioned this before but i remember one uh guest saying to me matt i told you in the first 30 minutes that conversation stuff i've not told my closest mm -hmm. friends i mean you talk about a great way to start a relationship with a potential uh, client right yeah. so yeah. yeah, it's one of those where I think um, bringing it back to what Dan was talking about, the free audit, having a very clear next step for your guests if you're using this strategy mm -hmm. makes an awful lot of sense. Now, can I do a shameless plug? Yeah, go for it. Well, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those. Shameless plug. If you want to know more about this strategy, uh, we have a course called the Podcast Connection Accelerator. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, at the time of recording, it is almost done. So hopefully when this comes, well, it's coming out next week, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, I, certainly the first part of the course is now live. The second part is getting uploaded in the next week. So, so there's a brand new course called Podcast Connection Accelerator, which walks you through this exact mm -hmm. strategy. So we take you through it line by line, like how to find the guests, how to email them, how to structure your interview, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know more, check out the course, which will be promoted on the Pod Junction website. So it is a really interesting strategy that Dan talks about here. And we do have a course that goes into more detail about it if you would like to know 
more. So check that out at podjunction.com. Just click on the courses link and it's called Podcast Connection Accelerator. So there you go. That was my shameless plug. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Um, all right. So where are we up to, Matt? Well, it's, it's, is there anything from you? I mean, you've got lots of green ink on your paper. Is there yeah. any anything from you? I've talked a lot on this episode. Sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. Um, something you were you were saying earlier about, um, you know, Dan has to do a lot of legwork and spend a lot of time in, you know, investing in doing the audits mm -hmm. and all that. I think um, you're right. But I think on the on the flip side, it it kind of feeds into that whole relationship building, yeah. doesn't it? Because it shows the it shows the client that these guys are actually committed mm -hmm. to um, or investing in us, and also they know their stuff. Yeah. So um, I think for Dan, it it works really well, doesn't it? Like yeah. his offer and um, obviously the results he's getting from that. Yeah, no, totally. For his business, it makes a lot, a lot of sense. Mm. For what we do with the podcast agency, it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, that strategy, does it work for an e-commerce business? It could do. Um, I think there's other things that you would bring into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's the sole strategy. Mm. Um, but I think if you've got clients that are, we often say to people when talking about this particular strategy, for me, if you have a, a CLV or a customer lifetime mm -hmm. value, of at least four thousand dollars, right? So if a customer's worth at least four grand to you, I think it's a really, really interesting strategy to yeah. look at. Um, I've not seen many things mm. perform as well as it does. Like I say, the only downside is mm. it requires a lot of effort from the podcast host, who's usually not all the time, but mm. who's usually the CEO or leader of the business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's who clients probably want to talk to, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do think mm. it's an interesting strategy. Mm. The other thing um, I wanted to point out, and I think a lot of our guests who've been on the sh this show have said this as well, about um, targeting who your guests are going to be, like being heavily targeted mm. with that. And I think it's the same with marketing. If you yeah. have targeted marketing, you get better results. Yeah, you do. If you target your guests well, you know who your listeners are, yeah. all of you know that whole mix, um, the closer you get to getting that on point. Yeah, the better off you're going to be. be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think your guests have to resonate with who your, like you say, who your target audience is. Mm -hmm. um, and if you use Dan's strategy, your guests have to resonate with the clients that you have. or you, you're, We call them your ideal clients, right? Yeah. So maybe not clients that you have, but maybe clients that you want. Yeah. Um, so they have mm -hmm. to resonate with those two audiences. So mm -hmm. when, there's no point in us interviewing somebody who's not really had a podcast yeah. on this show. It wouldn't make any yeah. sense for our audience. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't make any sense for the stuff which we offer those guests that come onto our show, yeah. right? Because we have the courses, we have the mm -hmm. mastermind and all that sort of stuff. And so it wouldn't make sense to do that. So we have to, we, I mean, you know, like you mm. say, we have to be targeted. So you're right. Mm. The, the more targeted you can be, the more thought you put into it, I think yeah, the better the mm. outcome. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, is there anything else? No. I've got all my notes covered now. <laughs> that was close. Well, wow, let's who, do we know who's in next week's show? We do. I want to say we. I'm I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Brooks. Richard Brooks, yeah. what a legend. <laughs> Agents of Change. Oh, yeah. So uh, we've got Rich Brooks coming up next week. But do check out Dan's uh, podcast. Check out his details. Everything's in the show notes and the show links. You can find out more about Dan. Reach out to him. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. And as we say, if you'd like to listen to the full interview, and why would you not? The man is such a legend. Check out Pod Junction Cohort because that's where it will be. It's super, super low cost to be a member. It's not even the cost of a cup of coffee these days. No. Uh, not that I buy coffee. Well, I, I, I buy coffee for other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 no, it's, it's almost the price of a cup of tea. Biscuit uh, tea. Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, biscuit tea, <laughs> uh, which is normally what I drink. But uh, that's another story. So, yeah, do check it out. Pod Junction Cohort. Everything's on the website, podjunction.com. Uh, but, yeah, it's been great to chat to you this week. Enjoyed this one. Yeah, me too. All right. We'll see you next week. And that brings us to the end of today's episode at Pod Junction, where business meets podcasting. If you enjoyed the insights from today and wish to hear the full conversation with today's special guest, don't forget to visit thepodjunction.com, where you'll find more information about how you can join today. 
Whether you listened while on the go or in a quiet moment, thank you for letting us be a part of your day. Remember, every episode is a chance to gain insights and to transform your business with podcasting. So keep tuning in, keep learning, and until next time, happy podcasting. Happy podcasting.